Hey guys, Melissa here. Welcome to my channel. This video will be part one of my handmade clasp or fastener series. So I'll show you how I make these three types. I've got a hook, some S-shaped clasp, and this double hook clasp. So if you want to see how I make them, just stay tuned and I'll show you how. Since we're making these clasps without a wire, it is important to work hard in these clasps, especially if you're using softer wire like I am. I always use dead soft wire, so I need to work hard in it. So you'll see me pulling it out with a nylon jaw pliers, and I often hammer them afterwards, either with a rawhide mallet just to harden them or an actual hammer to flatten it out but we want these clasps to be nice and sturdy so they don't bend and whoever's wearing our jewelry doesn't lose our jewelry. So in this video, I'm gonna make some really simple clasps that you can incorporate into your necklaces or bracelets. So my number one favorite clasp, which I've already made a video on, and I'll link that above, the little swan clasps I make and the figure eights. I use these so much that I make a bunch ahead of time in both sterling silver and copper. I'm not going to go over these today. Since I made a video on them already, I'm just going to show you what they look like and how big they are. So they're pretty tiny, but they work for me in a lot of my necklace and bracelet designs. So I either use jump rings or figure eights and they just kind of hook together like that. Sometimes I just want something quick and simple so it kind of blends into the design and you don't really see it. I'm going to make a few simple clasps here and you can decide which one you like the best and you can incorporate those into your own creations. Alright, so I'm going to grab some 18 gauge. 18 gauge is a nice sturdy gauge to use for clasps. If they're small enough, if you need to make a clasp big and chunky, then you can go up in size like 16 or even 14 gauge. But that all depends on your design. But since it's dead soft, I usually pull it out a little bit with my nylon jaw pliers. You can even use a polishing cloth. This kind of work hardens it a bit because you want sturdy clasps. Okay, this first one, I'm just gonna make a simple hook. I'm gonna cut the end flush. I'm gonna grab about two inches of wire here. One end, I'm gonna make a small loop with the tips of my round nose pliers. Just like that. On the other end, I'm going to make a larger loop, and this is where you're going to connect it to your bracelet. Or necklace. You're going to grab about the middle of your wire here, the base of your round nose pliers. kind of bend that around. And around this area where this loop lines up with the base here, I'm going to bend it just like that. You can always shorten it up. Use like an inch and three quarters if you don't like the length here. I mean, you can always experiment. So on its own, it seems pretty sturdy, but if you want to harden it a little bit more, you can take a rawhide mallet. If you don't have a rawhide mallet, you can take a regular hammer and lay something over it. If you don't want your fastener to be flattened, we can just go over the fastener really gently. sides. And if you do like that hammer look, you can come through with a little hammer. Hammer out the areas you want to have the flattened look. Yeah, 
that's what it looks like. Hammering always misshapens it, so you might have to push it back into shape. I want to make another variation of the hook, the 16 gauge. I grab two inches. I want to hammer the very tip where I'm going to make my loop. Just like the others, I'm going to make my hook right around the center area. Just kind of wrap it around. Right at the base, I just want to put a little curve in it. And I want to hammer this one out and put some texture in it. I find that little squiggle down here. So a double hammered hook. I hammered the loop and I hammered the curve. Let's see if I can fix this one too. I'm not big into that curve right there. There we go, 18 gauge and 16 gauge. Next, I want to make a S-shaped clasp, which is pretty much the same concept as this, but you're mirroring the hook on either side. Once again, I'm using 18 gauge, and I'm going to cut off another 2 inches as well. And same as before, going to make a tiny loop on one end. You're actually going to make a tiny loop on each end. I'm going to flip it around and I'm going to loop it the other direction. I'm going to come through and make sure my loops are nice and tight. But this time you're going to kind of eyeball the center. And you're going to go halfway to the center on either side and see where my loop is facing. So you're going to bend it the opposite way. You're going to do the same with the other side. Here's what that S fastener looks like. And then the end of your necklace will connect here and then you can use the other side as the hook. And then you gotta make sure it's nice and snug and closed. To make it nice and sturdy, just like the other one, you can gently tap it with your mallet to stiffen it up. pretty sturdy or you can come through with your hammer and flatten some of your curves to get that hammered look. And that's what that looks like. Of course once again the hammering misshapened it so you're going to have to push it. I kind of push it past and then bring it back and line it up. This is the part that will connect to the necklace or bracelet, so you want that nice and tight. And then this side is your clasp.
But real quick, I want to do another variation of the S clasp. This time around, I want to use 16 gauge. I'm just playing around here, just showing you different variations. Maybe this time I'll use two and a quarter inches because I want to make this clasp a little bit bigger. Say you have a, you know, a chunkier bracelet. You want something nice and sturdy. But this time I want to hammer out the ends so my little loops are hammered. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll just hammer the last quarter inch or so on either side. Both my ends are hammered. I'm going to make my loops going opposite directions on either side. Like here, find the middle of it. around my round nose pliers. Next I'm going to hammer out my curves. Maybe I'll put some texture in it as well. how it turned out. Of course we gotta adjust it. I'm gonna push that farther and then pull it out again so it's nice and snug. A little bit bigger, a little bit chunkier. This next one is a simple design and I tend to use it if I'm making more of a masculine uh, bracelet or necklace where you would want a nice simple clasp with no swirls or anything. I'm gonna grab some 18 gauge I'm going to grab three inches. So on either end, I'm going to make the same size loop. So make sure you, you kind of make a mental note on your round nose pliers where you're at. And this is the loop where the clasp is going to be fastened to your bracelet or necklace. I believe it was around there. So make the loop. Pretty good. All right, so you have your loops. Turn them sideways so you can't see them. Find your center. You can measure or you can eyeball it like I am doing. And then bring them both up and you want them to meet. So you can roll it either direction to get them to be even. But you want them to be right next to each other. I have to go back and roll them a little bit. But you're going to press these wires together. Keeping your loops together, press these wires together until you get to the end. So just gently come through and press these wires together. All 
All right, so when you get to this point and there's a little tiny gap at the end, take your flat nose pliers, grab the very tip of it, and give it a little bend. And like the other clasps, you're going to grab about the center with your round nose pliers down at the base. Grab the base of your loops and just kind of bend them down a little bit. Kind of shape it into the hook clasp. There we go, there's your basic simple clasp. And some variations of this clasp that I used. I made a super long clasp here. I made this Viking knit bracelet. And this is the clasp I put on it. So you can make them as small or as large as you would like. This clasp here is a 16 gauge, and this is 18 gauge. The larger you go, the thicker gauge you'll need. All right, so that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hit the like button if you did. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.